Hey everyone, this is part three in the ESP32 Automated Irrigation Control System Series. If you're first joining us now, click the link up here in the top right, we'll take you to the playlist. I'd encourage you to catch up before you jump into part three. In our last video, we inspected the meter and removed the read switch for testing, conducted magnetic continuity checks, replaced the whole meter with two wires, wrote code to support basic interrupts, bolstered it to support real measurements and conversions, then added in power off save with file system support using SPFFS, incorporated routines to trigger on update to write to file system, built hardware that would emulate a flowing water meter, evaluated the signal that this new test hardware produced, and pushed in the newly created library to Arduino IDE and platform IO where other folks could download it. Upon completion of part two, all the components were moved from the dev board to the prototype board as you see here. With the final components in place, we're going to be getting into the fundamental software architecture for this program. It's critical we get it right from the beginning. This thing needs to be designed correctly while things are still simple. Let's get started. The quad relay module is the focus of today's topic. It's shown just to the left of the temperature module shown here. And we're starting off with nothing, with a brand new application. This is just the defaults that comes with it. But looking at I, these are also just the defaults that's populated for this device. I'm just going to add a monitor speed. And what I'd like to do first and foremost is search libraries for the two libraries that were previously created. We'll do one at a time. Here's one for the water meter. We'll go right to installation. We'll take this information from live depths. We'll paste it in here. We'll also search for the ball valve. Here's the other library. Again, we see the installation. That should be it for our two libraries. I'd like to talk about how we're going to incorporate everything into our new sprinkler system object. And this is all under construction as I do it, so it's subject to change. And there's no vectoring in Arduino or ESP32, so I'm creating an array of zone objects that I'm going to be storing in storage zones. Every new instance of this zone object could be dropped into this array and indexed in this array up to 30. I definitely don't need 30, but this is the number that I used for the creation of this. Add, remove, and then be able to reference it through this object. I'll have to define some attributes, of course, as each zone is created. Some of them will be unique. Some will be populated as parameters of the zone as it's created. Some of them will allow for editing and modification after the zone is created. Furthermore, I want to pull in my library ball valve from previous chapters. This is the five wire valve. All this work has already been accomplished. And all the functions from ball valve should be made available to the sprinkler system class that are already defined. We'll also include the library from the water meter project. This too has defined functions or methods that's going to be available to the sprinkler system class. With all that in mind, we're going to jump right into the header file. We're not going to concern ourselves with the external libraries just yet. We could see our sprinkler system class right here, and it's just going from line 15 down to line 49. Not a whole lot going on here. And this is where the class starts. I've added a bool just so I could put one parameter in. It does nothing right now. But we see here that within this class is another class, and that's zone. And we define all of the attributes for zone within here. We close out that class. So a class within a class. And we're back here within sprinkler system and we're defining this array of zones right here. This is very important to point out how this is going to be accomplished because we're going to have a function add zone that's going to tie all of this together. We'll see in just a minute. But I also needed some helper functions or methods, what have you. I use it interchangeably to close a zone, open a zone remove a zone from the array, obviously already having add zone, it's complement. And I wanted something to set a description. And then I want something to uh, show information about a zone. I decided that maybe we're going to have an overloaded function here that if you don't have a parameter, it'll show information about all the zones currently in this array. Or if you provide some information, the name of a zone, then it'll just provide specific information about a zone. Also, we see here because the zones are indexed within the array, I need something that's going to be able to convert it in a way that it's going to understand. So if you're going to provide the name of a zone, there has to be a function to convert that back into that array index. Or perhaps if you're going to do it by GPIO, I don't want that directly 
accessible by the user, so that's going to be private. That's it. There's nothing else here. That's what we're going to use to get started. So here we are in the library. We're including Arduino.h for platform.io and sprinkler.h. And we can see for the creation of sprinkler system, there's no function to add sprinkler system. We're going to be doing that from the main application itself. But I've added that bool test as a parameter. As I said, it doesn't do anything. And we could see it doesn't do anything. For zone, we can see there are two parameters and they are in fact unique. The integer pin is the GPIO. There's only one pin tied to each solenoid. And then we have the name for that zone, again, a unique value. We can see here also I'm using this to prepend the name. It's not actually necessary to do so. It does make it easier to see as it's demonstrated. Case in point, we can see down here I'm calling GPIO without this. It works just fine. But we're defining GPIO by the pin. We're defining the this name by the name, making enabled false description set as unset reason for that later and um i'm setting the pin as an output immediately it is in fact an output goes to the relay and we'll be able to set that output high or low to turn the solenoid on or off in that zone we get to add zone things start to look complicated they're not really uh, again these are the two parameters we're actually calling add zone from the main application to add the zone so it does take those parameters again it's being passed on to zone so we're calling add zone from the main app those parameters are being passed to here so let's see what happens immediately we're testing the zone name limiting it to 25 characters this is a terrible way to do it again this is the app starting off in the beginning it's not perfect we should uh, assign a maximum zone name size somewhere in the library uh, that we could adjust it and not here buried in a function be that as it may if it's greater than 25 characters we're going to return an error and say this is not going to happen and that's all that is once we get past that what we're going to do is we're going to iterate in a loop from zero to max zones which we've established as 30. again there are people who are going to say you could get the max zones from stored zones without using a separate integer called max zones of course there is uh, but right now i just assigned max zones equals 30 and it was very easy and I could do it another way, obviously very easy to do. I just didn't, and that's all there is to it. But for this loop from zero to 30, I could check if each one is defined. We could just move on to the next one until we find one that isn't defined, so it's free. And then we could go down and we could say, hey, I need to find out if the zone name that I selected is in use. Because remember, we said that this is also a unique name. So it's calling another function I'm gonna get to, and basically, if it returns a value between zero and 30, it found from the lookup table, that zone name in use. It's gonna throw an error. Hey, you can't use this name. It's already being used. Sorry. If it gets past there, it's gonna look up index by GPIO. And again, if it comes back between zero and 30, that's also unique. You can't have the same GPIO in more than one slot. So it's gonna say, sorry, GPIO is in use. Can't add it, return it. So we've checked those. Finally, we've made it here. We've met all the conditions. Unique GPIO, unique name. Name is less than 25 characters, so we're good. So we're running that stored zones, whatever this iteration is, equals a new zone. And now we're passing those parameters to zone, the one we had just discussed, and said, hey, let's create that. With it created, we're now calling a digital write to that as high, which basically says, shut down that relay we do not want that solenoid opened we could in fact call close zone right here with the name of the zone to close the zone immediately but i just wrote uh the digital right the the direct command but if we look down here here's the close zone function that we could have called by name for that instance that we had just created to close the zone six one half dozen the other but here's close zone which basically takes the argument of the name it runs the routine now and if it comes back with one of the 30 indexes for that array, because basically it converts the name of a zone to an index of the array, it'll say close that zone by setting that GPIO to high and also set that attribute to false. So if you wanted to go and see what the state was at that moment, we would see that, is that valve open? No, it is not, it's false. You also see there's a lot of serial output right now. This is not a web-based app in its first iteration. This is all serial, and that's just what we're doing. 
Let's get down to get index, have a look at this. Obviously, overloaded function here. There's two get indexes. One is by character name, the name of the zone. The other one's by GPIO. They're both really doing the same exact thing. Return index is defined as an out of bounds value, unless, of course, return index can be set to one of the indexes of a zone based on this criteria. So we see that in this one's character name. And by the way, here's uh, getting the size of instead of using the max zones. So I actually used it in this program after all. We're trying to determine based on the name, which one of them has that name. If it has that name, then we're going to return that value as the index. If not, we're going to return 99. It's going to be out of bounds. And therefore, the caller is going to return that as an error. It's just a simple way of doing it. it. Does the same thing over here, but instead of by name, it's by GPIO. And then finally, a couple of helper functions. Open zone was the same exact thing as close zone, except returns low to digital right, true to the open Boolean value. Move zone is interesting. We're identifying the zone again. And when we do identify the zone, we're setting that index in the array. We're just setting it to null. We're not deleting any of the 30 uh, values in the array. We can't, they're always there, but we can make it null, removing that object instance from it. And then I have set description, which again, nasty uh, value here added directly into the function, limited to 60 characters. And uh, if it is within 60 characters, I've just set that attribute right from here. Storage zones, this index, description equals description and done. Here's zone info and overloaded function. If you do not assign a parameter, it does a nice little printout and tells you about all the zones that are currently defined. It's just something I put together as an example. If you do apply a zone name to zone info, it'll tell you specifically greater information about a single zone. Again, functional demonstration, and that's it. Let's put this all together and see how it looks in the main program and see what we got. All of this work was done in the design so we could arrive at a convention to easily interface with all of the hardware in the sprinkler system in the main program and as well as within the libraries themselves. We're going to walk through the main program now, which is really just a demonstration of everything we've done thus far. All we're really doing, we're including sprinkler.h, creating an instance of a sprinkler system, initializing our serial, uh, writing out that it's a sprinkler test program, and right here, we're adding zones by GPIO. And with some rudimentary checking, as illustrated before, this test yard is going to generate an error because we already have GPIO 13. So we keep adding zones. This zone throws an error because it is greater than 25 characters. This zone right here throws an error because the name of this zone already exists. We proceed onward and we remove this zone. We add this zone into the deleted zone 14 GPIO 14, which is index two in that array that was called about in line 19 here, then requested for removal in line 23. And now we're setting descriptions. We'll get a failure on this one because the description is way too long. Now I'm running that zone info demonstration. And now I'm running a zone info for an instance of a zone. Then there's a two second delay. Now we fall into our loop, which isn't really a loop, just going to run one iteration. We're going to open all the zones. Then we're going to close all the zones and we're going to stop. Let's check it out. On the top, we see the initialization portion, everything added or errored or deleted exactly as expected. This was followed by a summary of all the zones and then info on one zone. And then we ran into that loop portion where all the zones opened and then all the zones closed. Now we're going to proceed and add more hardware to the mix. Back in the header file, I've added the ball valve libraries we see here. So I scroll down, we could see five wire valve, which is part of the ball valve library. An instance of this is this valve is now within the sprinkler system class. With that, I've added some helper functions, add valve, obviously along with set valve to open and close it, as well as a few helper functions below that retrieve information or set information pertinent to the valve. Here we are in the library. Add valve quite simple here. And obvious to demonstrate there's only one main water valve for the sprinkler system. There's not multiple instances like zones. 
Here we have our set valve, and we'll notice that these functions within Sprinkler System are actually calling functions within the valve library. They're not being called directly by the program. Then we get the last duration, the max travel time. We can see that this is an overloaded function. One is getting it, one is setting it based on the parameter provided, also returning different data. This one gets the actual valve position. In our main program, we have the parameters that were established in the library to add valve. I'm setting the max travel time, default is eight. I added nine just for demonstration. Then right here, we call a function to get the current position of the valve, open the valve, and to get the duration of how long it took to open the valve. And then once all the zones close, we'll get the valve position, close the valve, and see how many seconds it took to close the valve. Try it out, we'll see what happens. So the current state is closed, now it's opening the valve. Now shows the current state is open and it took seven seconds to open the valve. Showing the current state again, which is open, it's closing the valve. Now showing the current state, which is closed and it took seven seconds to close the valve. Everything worked perfectly. We have one more component to add in this chapter. Let's do it now. Included here up above, we add our water meter library and below we have a flow meter, which is a water meter added to our sprinkler system class. And with this, we have three new functions to help as well as an obvious function that adds the meter. Two of them are reading the meter. This is an overloaded function. This is just used an example, may not be necessary. And one is a Boolean to ask if the meter has moved. We'll take a look at the library. Within the library, I have add meter. I happen to have set meter here right now, which is a component uh, to default the setting of the meter to a certain value if it hasn't been set, but that's just for testing. Initializing the file system, which is a component of the meter since it uses SPIFFS. Our Boolean value to check if the meter moved. And our read meter, one that just reads it based on our predetermined value if it's gallons or liters, so it doesn't take an argument. And the other one that explicitly checks for an argument that's provided to see if it's gallons or liters, returning by that type. Making our way over to main, we scroll down and we can see that just below our add valve component, we now have an add meter component. I've made verbose false in this creation. We'll see why in a moment. And as I make my way all the way down to the bottom of the loop, in that indefinite loop that stopped everything, we now ask the question, has the meter moved? And if the meter has moved, if it returns true, then we will read the meter. And what I've done is, just for a little extra, we'll read the meter in gallons as well as liters on the same line. And this will just sit here idle unless the meter moves. And in that moment, it'll do a printout. Let's try it out and see what happens. Now it seems to be sitting idle just as before, but if I turn the wheel and the read switch is closed, an indication appears on the screen showing the value in gallons converted to liters. This is checked every half a second right now in the program. Depending on how many times I can turn it within half a second will be what that interval will be for each line on the screen. And this is all the basic sprinkler system components working together in a class. That concludes chapter three. In chapter four, we're gonna have to get some sort of rudimentary web-based application working in order to migrate away from the serial output. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it entertaining, enjoyable, and informative. When chapter four comes out, a link will be posted in the top right hand corner. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. And hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?